and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and this is Sunday Notes 5. Sunday Notes 5, we're going to be sharpening a stagger tooth gear cutter. We're not going to be sharpening the actual face, but we need to create a radius on the corners. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to grind that in. It's going to be a hand job. Uh, so we'll move into the grinder here shortly. What I, I want to take a couple minutes here just to call out Rick Gearhart made a set of uh, stainless steel shafting rollers which I used for the very first time the other day I straightened out these shafts that we're working on now and that's what the cutters for to cut the keyways in there so here's a quick look outside using the rollers for the very first time thank you very much Rick all right here's the first first time I'm using these stainless steel rollers Rick Gearhart, took a set of my drawings, made this set out of stainless steel, and then sent them back to me. I'm grateful. Thank you very much. And I'm going to use them, all right? I want to be known as the guy that received them and used them, not the guy that received them and put them on the shelf and looked at them for, I don't know, some of these other guys to tell you how that goes. Um, anyway, we got the brand new shaft material here. It's tweaking about three here and then we got a few thousands here and there and we're going to make it run perfectly true before we get it inside. Just wanted to share the rollers. Marine shafting has standard radiuses called out for the root of the keyway and and that radii that's down in the bottom down in there is to help the stress rise area. Now here's a broken off end of a shaft propeller in and uh, luckily this was in shallow water fell off uh, going back and forth uh, near the dock and divers went down and retrieved it. So this is kind of a treasure because we actually get to have one. Sometimes when they're way out in deep waters you don't you don't get one at all. Um, the stressorized areas on shafting can be a hundred percent. This actually was radius down here. It was rolled over on the top. It had a spoon keyway and yet it still broke off and that was because it wasn't fit up right. But we're not here to talk about or blame on this here. I just letting you know that the cutters that we use need to have that radius ground in on the corner. And this happens to have sharp corners and I need to address this because I want to run this on this machine within a couple minutes here. And uh, this cutter here I have been pushing past the limits and it also has a couple little uh, uh, chipped out areas in on it and uh, uh, it's just it's seen better days. We need to address this and I thought I'd bring you along for the uh, demonstration. So let's grab our radius gauges here. That that radius is, that's um, in there is a 364 radius that needs to be on here and I'm going to double check it with my last one here and that looks exactly like I put in on this one here so all right let's take our radius gauge and our gear tooth cutter and head on into the uh, grinder okay before we fire this thing up and and start making sparks let's just talk a little bit about what we're actually doing this is the corner here that we want a radius this is the outside edge. This this edge right here cuts. This surface right here is behind that cutting surface, which is relief in the sweep. Okay, and this edge right along this outside edge right up here at the top 
this is also a cutting edge and then this back rake or the clearance on the side here is side clearance so we're going to be putting a radius around the, the tip here and we need to make sure that around that radius we're maintaining some kind of clearance behind the cutting edge because our radius actually becomes the cutting edge now here's looking back this this cutter I've used a couple times and you can see a little bit of wear on it this one right here really has kind of a, a, a wear on the point there now yes we're gonna sharpen this by hand and it's not like sharpening it by a machine and there's no way that we're actually saying this is as good as or anything the combination of all of our hand grinds all the way around when this thing makes a complete revolution it is going to make some kind of radius in the root of the keyway that is going to be within the tolerances that we're looking for. So if if one or two of these are uh, the radius, sometimes you'll find that one will be cutting on the outside, one will be cut on the face, and if you really study it hard. But if you have enough feed rate in the travel, almost every tooth is going to be picking up some kind of material. All right. Now there's a radius gauge, and that's what we're going to do is hold that radius gauge up to the light after we've adjusted or ground some and we're going to set our shape to the inside of the corner there and that's going to gauge our radius and we're going to make each tooth as close as we can to that so that we create that radius or radii down in the bottom of the keyway okay i've i've adjusted the table angle so that when these two teeth here are setting flat and holding it upright I, I can kind of get the feel of uh, by holding it down on the table with those teeth like that I am approaching the stone with this tooth right here so that this tooth here has clearance this tooth here has clearance and that angle that I'm talking about behind on the grind is going to be enough to give the cutting edge a relief behind it. The best way I can explain how I'm going to hold and how I'm going to guide this this cutter. So I'm actually going to hold this by hand. I'm going to hold it down here and I'm going to work this cutting edge like this. Of course I'm going to put you on the other side and I'm going to get in here where it's comfortable so that I can put two hands on it because that's what it's going to take is to actually hold that steady enough to work that back and forth like that actually in an arc you know kind of working working you know work that radius all all the way on both okay and then we'll we'll switch to this one and we'll switch to this one all right we'll go all the way around and do the the left hand side of the cutter which would be this side here is the way i'm looking at it and then we're going to set up and then we'll be doing the right hand we'll hold it in this angle here and we'll work it this way here we'll use the same side of the stone and we'll be doing that side and that's how I keep it as close as possible by hand okay are we ready all right all right testing the light looks good all right all right here we go <clears throat> Okay, there's our first tooth. All right, now we're going to go to the next one. After you see one, you can pick up on them right away.
And I'm gonna hold them up to the light afterwards to where I got, I can pay attention to each one. I'll flip it around and I'll look at it. And then if I need to adjust anything after that to really get into detail. Right now I'm just looking through my gauge at the glare on the table there and kind of looking at the shape of the tool sitting in the cutter uh, gauge there, or the radius gauge, I should say. And I just take it till it looks good in there. And but by setting up your table and holding it like this, you know that you know you're not afraid because you're not you you are staying pretty good distance away from hitting any other teeth there. Okay, that's all the way around that side. It really doesn't take that long. It actually takes longer for me to tell you about it than it does to do it. All right, now we're going to take and we're going to do our other side. So we set up, we set up the other side here. Okay, we moved over to the other side of the grinder to set up for the opposite side so that we're out on the outside because you want to be able to you want to feel comfortable and I don't like my knuckles coming into the far side of the wheel here so we got to get used to sliding it in the on this side here okay check that with the radius gauge that dropped a little bit more Good. And we're back to the first one there. All right. Look at we missed one. <clears throat> and that's what you don't want to do. You don't want to miss one. You want to do them all. If you miss one there, that one is kind of taking the whole load and uh, it kind of wipes out the good deeds of all the rest of them. Alright, we're going to double check this up to the skylight and then uh, if we need to touch it up, we'll come back in and touch it up. Alright, 
right, we had we had two that we adjusted. They were just a little bit tighter radius than the others, and that's what you want to look at when you're holding that gauge up to your radius. There, you just want to make sure that they're all at least conforming to your own feel of how you place the the gauge along the 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 cutting edges. And we put this on the right direction. There we go. All right. So we're going to change around the mill, we're going to get our shaft set up, and let's see how it cuts. That tells the story. You kind of look at your teeth and you cut after they've gone through a couple times. You can tell if you got one that is overbearing or overpowering the, the other ones. And then you can make an adjustment real quick even before you get into a full depth and into uh, um, the first part in the first keyway. All right. We got the cutter in here, and we're feeding it side to side, and then bringing it up slowly until we get the width across here, a half an inch, or the width of the cutter. Then we bring this in, and with the, the light on it, we can look at each side of the cutter. And align that cutter to that. That's zero as far as our depth. We set that on the dial. And we're zero side to side. All right. Now we want to back out, so we want to be at the very end of the uh, flat. Okay, that's it right there. All right, now we're going to add some juice. Okay, we got it going now. We just bring it back down to a trickle. That's about all we need right there. All right. Now we're going to plunge it to full depth. Okay, that's one eighth there. We need to go add a little bit on our tumble arm over here so that it, we maintain. Uh, the load on the table. We don't want to overstress the table. All right, here we go. We're going for the other half. Okay, that's full depth. We're going to engage the feed now. We're going to give it just a little bit more cool in here. Doesn't sound bad. That's pretty much what uh, Aquamet 22 sounds like when it's being cut with the wheel cutter. My Arbor bar runs within a couple of thousand, so some of that might be that as far as the pitch difference you hear. But in between that, you can hear. You can hear pretty much a load on each each tooth that is going. It does have a nice gloss down there in the bottom. That's a good sign. We're almost to the end of the cut here. Okay, that's the end of the cut. Now 
we got lower down on our chain ball and our cable a little bit at the same time here. Really nice looking radius down in there and down in there. Nice gloss on there. I'm happy with the grind I put on that cutter. <clears throat> okay, we gotta end all this and we gotta continue on our project. I hope uh, you like to share with the sharpening of the wheel cutter. And until next time, get her done.